right so in today's video i'll be talking about uh, make merry coupling now this is a very important name reaction especially uh, if you are you know if you are a synthetic organic chemist and in this reaction what we have is if you have two equivalents of any carbonyl compound right so it can be the same carbonyl compound or we can take different carbonyl compounds so for this example i have taken this cyclohexanone so if we take two equivalents of the cyclohexanone right and in presence of titanium tetrachloride so ti uh, cl4 titanium tetrachloride and zinc okay these are the reagents which are used for mcmary coupling what happens is there is this heterolytic cleavage of this bond right so one homolytic cleavage sorry right and a free radical is formed so we have this free radical form, this carbon free radical and similarly on the second equivalent we have a carbon radical form, carbon free radical and this oxygen coordinates with the titanium right so it, it coordinates with this titanium and we have these two radicals generated now these two radicals combine with, combine with each other and we get a CC bond right then what happens is again a cleavage take, a free radical cleavage takes place and again we have uh, this this particular bond donating one electron and this particular bond donating one electron to get a alkene and titanium di dioxide as the side product so basically what is happening is if you have two carbonyl compounds the from the two carbonyl compounds a coupling reaction is taking place and we are getting a alkene right so it is a very important reaction because uh, you know uh, if you take two carbonyl compounds and you add titanium tetrachloride and zinc right and then um, it could be the same carbon compo compounds like you can have two equivalents of the same carbon compound or you can have different carbon compounds and you'll get a coupled product right now uh, relevant to this topic a question came in june 2016 uh, paper it came in june 2016 for four marks and the question number was 101 so the question number was 101 and it came for four marks in june 2017 uh, 2016 paper right and the question was this is the reagent given to us then on addition of concentrated sulfuric acid we get something uh, we get a okay so we have to pre predict what is a and then after we get a then if we add this carbonyl compound given over here and we add titanium tetrachloride and zinc that is mcmary coupling we get b so we had to predict the structures a and b now this is quite a conceptual question and you need to understand it well in order to uh, you know so that your basics are right and you can actually solve such, such questions right so first of all this concentrated concentrated h2so4 so basically it is a proton donor and we can write it as h3o plus right because it's a concentrated form so h3o plus we'll write it as now so it's a proton donor right now the proton can be so this nitrogen can be protonated over here it has lone pair right and this nitrogen also has lone pair it can be protonated this oxygen has two lone pairs this can also be protonated and this oxygen can also be protonated so the, 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 these are these are the four sites where the protonation can take place right but if you see this nitrogen the, see nitrogens are better bases than oxygen because nitrogen can donate can readily donate their lone pair of electrons right so the proton protonation can take place on this particular nitrogen or on this particular nitrogen but if you see this nitrogen which i have circled the lone pairs on this nitrogen are participating in resonance with this phenyl ring right and they are also participating in resonance with this amide bond because with the carbonyl compound right so this is amide bond and again the lone pair is participating in resonance so the lone pair is not available for for protonation because it is participating in bonding right so so the protonation is going to take place on this particular nitrogen and we are going to have nh right and because of this nh we are going to generate a positive charge on this nitrogen now once this proton is is donated we have oh2 or water present in the solution so we have water present in the solution right this water is going to act as a nucleophile and is going to attack this particular carbon over here right and this double bond then will migrate back okay like this so as a, as a result what we are going to get is uh, we have this phenyl ring right and then we have our NH we have our NH right 
then we have double bond O and then we have our carbon attached to nitrogen NH right and then we have our OH attached to the nitrogen and over here also we got our OH because of the attack of the water molecule we got OH over here as well so this is what we are going to get right now what is going to happen is see this nitrogen again has a has a lone pair of electron and again H plus is generated in the solution right this this it's a concentrated form so there's a lot of H plus in the solution so this this nitrogen is again going to get protonated right and uh, once this nitrogen is going to get protonated again we'll have we, what we'll have is phenyl right then we have our uh, NH right I'll destroy it quickly and again the protonation is going to take place so we have our NH2 NH2 OH right and we have our uh, OH group over here and a positive charge on this particular nitrogen right now again when this H plus is protonated over here we have this H plus this is protonated again we have water in the again we have water in the solution right so this water is again going to attack this carbon and this bond is going to cleave right so we'll have NH2OH as the byproduct and we'll have two hydroxy groups attached to this particular carbon right and there's also one hydrogen attached to this carbon so we have one hydrogen as well attached to this carbon and we have two hydroxy groups and this bond will cleave and we'll get NH2OH and we'll have two hydroxy groups attached to this carbon now two hydroxy groups on the same carbon is very very unstable so what is going to happen as a, as a result is that uh, I'll just draw it over here okay I'll draw the product over here so the two hydroxy groups are extremely unstable and because of which we'll get a aldehyde instead uh, instead so a condensation reaction will take place water will be removed when there are two OH groups present water will be removed right and we'll get an aldehyde instead so I'll just draw the structure so if we have phenyl right then we have nitrogen NH right this is attached to a carbonyl group amide bond basically and like I told you aldehyde is formed so we have hydrogen and we have this so this is going to be the structure that is going to be formed right now now what is going to happen is I'll draw it on the next slide so if I draw the structure the whole structure that will make it easier for you so Right. It's a little complicated, but if you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. So we have NH, right? Then we have our carbonyl group, and we have then our aldehyde, right? So we have our aldehyde over here. Now, since H plus is present in the solution, it's acidic solution, so this oxygen will be protonated, and we'll have OH positive, right? So because of this OH positive, what is going to happen is this this carbon, carbonyl carbon will <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this carbonyl carbon will get activated, right? This carbonyl carbon present over here, this will get activated because ox positive charge on the oxygen makes it even more electronegative, right? So that is why this carbonyl carbon will have delta positive charge, it will be more electrophilic. Now this arene, this this phenyl ring over here, this is electron rich because like I told you this amine is participating in resonance, it will donate electrons, right? And because of which the ortho and the para position, the ortho, the para position, this is the para position and the ortho position over here, they will be electron rich. And because this, this carbonyl group is now activated, this carbonyl carbon is activated and this, this group over here, this phenyl is now electron rich. So this there is there is going to be attack of this double bond on this particular carbon, right? And then we'll get OH like this, right? So the attack is going to take place, and as a as a result, what we're going to get is let's draw, right? And
and uh, so a positive charge will be generated over here because of the attack a positive charge generated over here and we have our uh, so we we'll get this 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 kind of product right so i'll just draw it so we have nitrogen hydrogen right c double bond o oh right and we have this attachment right so this is what we are going to get and then there's this hydrogen also present over here okay now what is going to happen is so again we have water present in the solution right we have water present in the solution so this water mole molecule is going to attack this particular carbon over here this positive charge and we'll have OH attachment over here, right? We'll have OH attached on this particular carbon over here. This carbon will have OH attached. Okay, one thing I uh, missed out is, so once we have this compound, like I told you there are two OH groups on the same carbon. Right, we have two OH groups on the same carbon and uh, then we had a hydrogen attached and then there was some R group attached to this, right? So we had two OH groups attached on the same carbon. So now what is going to happen is this bond gets broken. Okay, this OH bond gets broken. So we have H plus, H plus is generated and this OH minus leaves, right? So we have OH minus as well in the solution. And this OH minus is a good base. So what is going to happen is this OH minus so this bond gets broken and this OH minus is basically going to abstract this particular hydrogen over here, right? So this OH minus is going to abstract this hydrogen and this OH bond is going to cleave and we'll get our A as this product. Okay, so a lot of things are happening. You have to pay attention. So first of all, this OH minus is, is abstracting this hydrogen, right? And then this OH bond is getting broken and this bond is migrating like this and we are getting we are getting our ketone right and along with that what is happening is like i told you so if i draw the phenyl ring so we have the phenyl ring right and uh, so we have our nitrogen h right and double bond o double bond o right and we have like i told you uh, OH, is, OH, OH was attached on this particular uh, OH was attached on this particular carbon and we have a hydrogen over here so again dehydration is going to take place and water is going to be removed and we'll have a double bond generated over here okay so we'll have a double bond generated generated over here and this bond and so water is going to be removed right so basically our A product will be this Okay, so it's it's complex, but it's quite simple. I mean, you just need to understand the basic protonation and deprotonation steps. I mean, there's no not much uh, complex chemistry that's going on to get the product A. So the product A you can easily identify. But when we move on to the product B, now like they have given pH two, so a phenyl group C double bond O pH, right? This, this is what they have given as the second reactant and in presence of titanium tetrachloride and zinc. So basically mercury coupling is going to take place, mercury coupling, right? Now in mercury coupling, <coughs> what is going to happen is, so we have this, these two ketone, these two carbonyl compounds. One is, one is a mild carbonyl, right? And one is a simple ketonic carbonyl group. Now which one of them is going to uh, undergo McMurray coupling. Okay, so we have two candidates over here. One is this candidate given over here Which is given in the reactants and one is this candidate over here So which one of them will are is more likely to undergo McMurray coupling? Okay, so Some of you might think okay this this might go and Undergo McMurray coupling some might think this might this this cardinal compound might go under McMurray coupling now for McMurray coupling this oxygen has to coordinate with titanium right because this oxygen needs to be stabilized so this oxygen can only be stabilized when this oxygen can coordinate with it with, with the titanium right 
so a radical is going to be generated on this carbon and then the McMary coupling is going to take place right I was saying this oxygen uh, has to coordinate with titanium so the radical on this oxygen needs to be stabilized in order for the uh, for the intermediate to be formed so the, like like in the previous slide I had shown I'll just show it again so we have this radical formation taking place on this carbon and this oxygen getting uh, basically uh, getting stabilized with the help of this titanium by coordination with this titanium so similarly over here also we will want this oxygen radical uh, to be formed which will be stabilized by titanium right now in this case if you see this nitrogen right so the, so the more the charge on the on the oxygen the higher the charge on the oxygen the more likely it is to coordinate with titanium okay and one more thing that i need to tell you guys is that see the a lot of mechanisms have been proposed so the one that, that i have shown you over here this is a one electron mechanism this is a one electron mechan mechanism but there are several two electron mechanisms also being proposed right so any one of them is, is is the correct mechanism you cannot say that one is wrong and one is correct right so basically the more the electron density on this oxygen the more likely it is to coordinate to the titanium right now if you compare both the both the both, both the carbonyls right so in this this nitrogen lone pair is also partic participating in the in the in the resonance with the phenyl ring it is no doubt participating with the uh, with this carb with this particular carbonyl compound as well but it is also participating in the resonance right so that is why this electron this, this the resonance is not as strong uh, as a as a simple amide that is there because in the because uh, because of the presence of the phenyl ring because we uh, because of participation in the resonance with the phenyl ring the lone pair of electrons are, are not as delocalized i mean if you are comparing to a simple amide bond so they will be delocalized over here with the phenyl ring and they will be delocalized de over here with the carbonyl compound right so the density on the oxygen would not be as strong as a simple amide but in this case because of resonance this bond is going to migrate like this right and then we're going to have O minus right so over here the electron density is more compared to this particular carbonyl so compared to this carbonyl with the one which I have shown the arrow the electron density on this particular oxygen is going to be more right so the coupling over here is going to take place I mean the major product will be because of the coupling uh, the make merry coupling taking place on this particular carbon the one I have shown with the double arrows right so again I will tell you so it all depends on the electron density on the oxygen because this oxygen has to coordinate with the titanium now over here this nitrogen lone pair is participating in resonance with the phenyl ring right because of which it is not as much available for uh, you know delocalize for, for the re resonance participation with this carbonyl compound as we can uh, say for a simple amide bond right so and but in this case this is in resonance the co bond is in resonance with this phenyl ring because of which the electron density on this oxygen is increasing and it is more likely to coordinate with the titanium to form the intermediate right so that is why this will be the major product and a b will be this particular this particular product where the mcmary coupling is taking place on this particular carbonyl that i have shown so this this is the this is the correct option for a and this is the correct option for b right